If you want to know exactly what you need to do to help metabolize your estrogen safely, then this is the video for you. Make sure to subscribe so I can help you get your hormones in harmony and optimize your health. And don't forget to click the bell so you'll be the first to not be notified when my new videos come out. Welcome back to the Hormone Healing Show. Today I'm going to show you how to metabolize your estrogen safely. So this is one of my favorite subjects, talking about estrogen. And I like to talk about estrogen in terms of the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm gonna teach you exactly what you need to do to get your estrogen metabolized as safely as possible to protect you throughout your aging process, whether you're a young woman or an older woman, to have the safest estrogen metabolism. But first of all, you need to understand something. Estradiol produced by your ovaries is the main hormone. It is a short acting hormone. It is the strongest hormone that you make in terms of estrogen. It affects your brain, it helps your memory, it gives you youthfulness, it helps you grow beautiful hair, skin, nails. Estrogen helps, estradiol particularly, helps your vision. So when you start losing that estrogen as you go through perimenopause and menopause, you start getting nearsighted or you have what I call short arm syndrome where you can't read very well without reading glasses, that's all an estradiol effect. Estradiol I also call the joy hormone. It actually helps you produce serotonin and keeps, your, keeps you in balance and happy. Estradiol is great, except it doesn't last very long in your body. So luckily for us women, we have some fat cells that allow us to use enzymes in those fat cells to create a longer acting estrogen. That estrogen is called estrone estrone, but they're not created equally. You do not make the same types of estrone. You have three types of estrone. You have the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now the good estrone is called 2-hydroxyl estrone. What that means is on the little circular carbon group, you have a hydroxyl group. If it's on the second carbon, it's called 2-hydroxyl. The 2-hydroxyl estrone is the good estrone. You make this when you're young. You also make this if you stay fit and slim, you don't have a lot of extra body fat, and you're very, very active. It is super important to keep a healthy weight and to be active even as you age to try to make more of good estrone or 2-hydroxyl estrone. Now the bad estrone, and by bad I mean the carcinogenic estrone, the one that is more likely to cause cancer, is called 4-hydroxyl estrone. Now, Premarin, pregnant mare's urine, which is a form of estrogen given to menopausal women as hormone replacement, is almost always converted into 4-hydroxyl estrone, or the bad carcinogenic estrogen. So why don't all women get cancer, breast cancer in particular, when they take Premarin? Because breast cancer, as are all cancers, is a multifactorial disease. It's not just one thing that causes breast cancer. You can actually counterbalance it by other things that you're doing in your lifestyle. But this is the estrone that we want to avoid. Now what we make a lot of as well is this what I call the ugly estrone, 16-hydroxyl estrone. So it's inflammatory. It causes inflammation in your body. It causes your breast to get super full. It actually is the 16-hydroxyl estrone that causes fibrocystic breast disease or those lumpy, painful breasts. It can, it's the 16-hydroxyl estrone that contributes to fibroid uterus or those benign tumors in the uterus. It's the 16-hydroxyl estrone that causes the really heavy bleeding um, in periods that are, that are extremely heavy and cramping. This is the one that's inflammatory. We don't want this one. Why do we make this one? Well, as you age, you make more 16-hydroxyl than 2-hydroxyl. We can't control that part. What you can control is your weight. Obese women make a lot more 16-hydroxyl estrone. Women who are sedentary, they're not moving, they're not active, they make more 16-hydroxyl estrone. And women who consume xenoestrogens in the form of plastics, like drinking your water out of a plastic bottle, especially if it's been heated, or pesticides like DDT, or even certain drugs like cimetidine or tagamet that is used for ulcers can actually enhance the production of 16-hydroxyl estrone. And alcohol, now moderate alcohol intake, which is considered one ounce of hard alcohol for a female, 
daily is fine, but more than that, excessively will increase your 16-hydroxyl estrone or the ugly inflammatory estrogen. We don't want that. So what are we going to do in order to change this? Now one of the things you might notice is there's an arrow to another estrogen here, and this estrogen is called estriol. Well luckily for you, for all of us women, our 16 hydroxyl estrone can be converted into estriol, and this is a protective estrogen, but unfortunately it goes back and forth. So the more your lifestyle is favoring the bad stuff, you're drinking too much, you're not very active, you're exposing yourself to xenoestrogens and soy and plastics, then you're going to have more issues with 16 hydroxyl estrone and estriol converting back up to this. Estriol is the pregnancy hormone. It's considered one of the safest hormones, but it can be converted back to the 16 hydroxyl estrone by your fat cells. So how do you actually increase your own production of 2 hydroxyl estrone? Well, you can take certain supplements. Now, in your diet, if you're eating lots of cruciferous vegetables, now cruciferous vegetables are those stinky ones like broccoli and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts and cabbage and kale, those vegetables actually have a sulfur molecule. That's what smells stinky in them. But it's that stinkiness, that particular chemical called DIM, D-I-M, it's from IC3 indoles, that actually helps to protect you and help you make more 2-hydroxyl estrone. Now the, the dose of DIM that you want to take is 200 milligrams once or twice a day in order to protect you, especially if you're aging, especially if you have, if you're overweight, you're sedentary, you're exposing yourself to xenoestrogens, to so try to convert this back over to the 2-hydroxyl estrone you want to be taking DIM. The other thing in your diet that's super healthy and really, really helps your body to make more of the safe, good estrone are fish oils. And it's the EPA in fish oils, unfortunately not the DHA, which you can get from algae and vegetarian sources, but the actual fish body and skin oil, EPA, that actually increases the 2-hydroxyl estrone or protective, good estrogen production and ligands. Now ligands are basically like the fibrous aspects of things like flax seeds. That will increase your 2-hydroxyl estrone and protect you. And of course, I've put within my Genesis Gold product protective plants to help you metabolize your estrogen much more safely. Now you know what you need to do to metabolize your estrogen more safely, but it's not easy if you don't have the rest of your hormones in balance. That's why I created the Hormone Reboot Training, for you to discover how to get your hormones balanced naturally. It's free. Just click the link in the description below this video. So what's one hormone healing tip you might try this week? Leave your answer in the comment section below and make sure you sign up for my Hormone Reboot Training. If this video was helpful, be sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and hit the like button so I know to make more videos like this. Thank you for watching my video and I'll see you in the next one.